liquor flowing through my head like can't two, girl, can you? Just stop for a moment and take a second She say I'm losing my mind, but it's better than lost affection, girl I never try to deny how to connection, girl Cause love don't come with a God inside the directions Alright, hello guys, welcome It's Reflections with did you start it? <laughs> okay, recap, recap, recap. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. It's Reflections with Val. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> Welcome. This is episode 11, and today we have a special guest. Go ahead, introduce yourself. I go by the name of Misfit. Um, yes. Call me Misfit. Um, Sylvester, Still Stoned, uh, Morgan Treeman, whatever you want to call. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me stop. Uh, they call me Misfit, and... I am an artist. Yes, thank you, you are. for having me. Of course, <laughs> I love it. I love artistry. I love bringing all of us together. It just warms my heart. But um, <laughs> no, like I really wanted you to come because I like your music. I thank really you, do. thank you. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I heard you for the first time on One Mic Day. Really? Yes. The first time I heard you was check it. Check yeah, it. Yeah. Like, okay. That was the first time I got yeah, to, yeah. I got the chance to hear oh, you. Oh, that's so true. Like, oh yeah. So maybe it was check it, and then. But before that, I think it was on what might they though. Like you had performed and I'm gone up and I was like, wow. Like I think you're like I was like intrigued. I was like, okay, I see you. Thank you, thank you. No, but, uh, one mic day is always full of talent, like talent upon talent. So I feel like if you're gonna go to one mic day, you have to bring your A game, you know? Right. So let's uh, how long you've been doing this right now, like recently? Uh Visiting? in terms of music or in terms of performing? performing and visiting like all these open mics recently in the in, in jersey um i want to say it's been six going on seven months since i released my album so in the process of working on the album i tried to stay a little more low-key i was just really in the studio really working if you weren't a part of the inner circle then you really didn't see me too much i was kind of like behind the scenes i was still dropping music mm -hmm. but it was kind of like that mystery kind of effect like i drop a project when I wanted to or a song like you would get little to no promo or like lead up to it it just it would just drop when it, it drops it would just drop and, and I'd be like yeah. hey guys look check out the new music and everyone's like wait what I, I'm waiting <laughs> on this new album what is all this new music so that's kind of what happened so I want to say about six seven months since I've been consistently going back that's to awesome. um, the open mics and stuff how have you been feeling I've been feeling amazing I get <laughs> <laughs> I got to meet um other creatives like you other talented artists people who i've got to network with and collaborate with and i couldn't be more thrilled <laughs> okay so you definitely noticed a difference in that oh yeah sure. definitely okay so let's talk about you're from garfield new jersey like you said Correct. right um so let's talk about where this all started like when did you think like music chose you like you literally w first heard it it was intrigued you were like this is um, cool at what age? I feel like music's always had that, that kind of pull on me. Um, my father was a DJ. My stepfather was really, like, musically inclined. My mother wrote poetry. But it was mm. always kind of things that, like, I never really took note of as a kid. It was just, oh, that my mom writes poetry, you know? And as I got older, I realized it kind of had that grip on me as well. So um, I want to say as a kid, I was kind of just... I gravitated towards it. But um, it wasn't until junior year of high school that I was really like, you know what? I really want to become an artist. Like right. I, I know, I know I can rap. I didn't really sing too often, but I'm like, Hey, like I love R and B music. I grew right. up on it. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure I could write it, you know? And I just worked at it and worked at it. And, um, it kind of did yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like uh, junior year of high school is really when I came to terms with, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Ooh. Okay. So you're, family were you the only sibling or like no i'm the, actually the oldest out of all my blood siblings i'm the oldest <laughs> okay okay so that's cool so your family th th you said there was someone that ha had music influenced in uh yeah my stepfather so when i used to live in new york with my mother mm -hmm. uh my stepfather was very prevalent in my life so i would always hear him making music um he had his he always had a studio in the in the house so i would go there i'd mess around with things not really knowing what it was but um he'd always tell me like you know you you really have like a knack for it even though you didn't know the technical aspect of it he's like you kind of have a knack for it like you have an ear for the music so i, I guess that kind of dried me oh that's awesome how <laughs> old were you then um i want to say around nine or eight. Oh wow that's i was still really soon. young wow. yeah i was still really young mm, and would you say like when you were going through stuff in your life um around this growing up and becoming from a boy to a man like was there 
a song in particular that you kind of heard in that time or if that transition that helped you any genre anything of that nature um, that it wasn't really necessarily anything mm. in particular I'm kind of weird when it comes to like you're speaking on like inspiration and stuff I was I drew inspiration from like movie scenes and just certain colors and just certain aspects of things that I just draw out of life you know and it give me a feeling so I, I make music out of feeling like that's it's, it's actually weird. amazing I never yeah. had like I'll read a song. book and it'll inspire me like you know what I kind of I could play with this concept and I could you know make it my own that's awesome <laughs> I love it's, that process of creation. It's kind of unorthodox that like you'd hear it nowadays, but yeah, it's kind of like a picture prompt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And in school, I I love those. And the um, what was the other one that they'd give you a time limit and you'd just have to blurt out as much stuff, like just write as much as you can within that time limit. And then when you'd read it back, you're like, this is all nonsense, <laughs> but it was fun, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like whatever. So let's talk about the first time you started creating. When, how old were you when you started creating? Um, I I grew up kind of like rapping. That was kind of like my first uh-huh. facet. So I just always play beats and I'd freestyle. But it wasn't until, like I said, junior year when I was like, all right, I'm going to start composing songs with this concept. And then this concept is going to fit into this EP or this project this way. And it, it's kind of like I, I had to grow towards towards it. At first, it was just like, I really saw the world as like black and white, like, oh, you're a rapper, you're a singer, you're a mm-hmm. producer, that's it. Like, I yeah. didn't really know anything. But after that, um, I kind of started analyzing all these other artists and I was like, you know what, you could get your message across in other aspects. So that's when I started picking up a camera and that's when I started ta- uh, teaching myself to sew and mm-hmm. just different, you know, forms of expression to Let express how I'm feeling accurately, you know? So as you were doing these activities Mm -hmm. you would just get the words yeah it just it just all made it just all made sense to me it's kind of weird so (laughs) So the song meaning and everything with the melody everything (laughs) it's kind of like like, it's like an epiphany yeah for me it's kind of like it's narrowing down the ideas in order to make the song because i i'll hear a beat and i hear so so many ideas flooding my mind you know Mm -hmm. and it's kind of about narrowing it down and making it more straight-headed you know Right. And that's more unorthodox than, than most. So. Yeah, because like, I'm a creative that's an overthinker. Mm-hmm. So I'm Same. Compl- like, oh my yes, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'll get stuck on something and then I'll just say thinking on that, that same rut and it's like hard to get out of that loop, right? Mm-hmm. So like, how do you get out of that um, um, loop in your creation process? I feel you just shouldn't flood yourself. So if you start getting overwhelmed with a song, just start writing another song you know or try to express yourself in another way like i i'm a real big like advocate of reading like so if that's that's one way i like to stimulate uh stimulate my mind so just i feel getting your mind off of it and going back onto it it'll give you that fresh perspective and you know a better outlook on it okay so the you you've read throughout your life as well and that's probably when I was younger, I wasn't too big on it. When I first learned how to read, I feel like every kid is kind of like, oh, yeah, now I could be nosy. I could read, you know, my parents' yeah. text messages and <laughs> all the so things true. I'm not all the things yeah. I'm not supposed to read. But um, after a while, it kind of like I, I fell off and I really got into the music. And then um, it helped your writing. Yeah, it, it got to the point that I started to realize, like, you know what, like, I don't really have that much time for TV anyways. So why not just pick up a book? and that's exactly what i started doing i started gravitating towards poetry a lot as you get older i feel like you start to get out of the the things that you would like as a child and you start to evolve a little bit more like, <laughs> yeah, like the things that you made fun of your parents it, exactly. for, like you find yourself doing it and you're just like oh i catch myself watching the news now like as i get older and like when i was younger i'm like why are you watching the news mom like yeah some, i don't i don't on. i don't watch the news like that but like when i do catch myself watching it i i think of those things too i'm like yo like wow everything even now the generation and their interest in music is completely mm-hmm. like they're calling like I, I had a 12 year old say that Jay-Z sucks in the gym. I mean, hey, you know? I, I feel like every <laughs> every generation has their um has their sound. And I, I just take it for what it is. Like I, I accept it for what it is. Like, I accept it for what it is. Too. I was like, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> I realized like a lot of these new artists are production driven. So like I just that's what I accept it for. I'm like, oh, that's some amazing production. I can't really relate to what they're saying, but the production is amazing or, you know, that's so, so true. It is the production driven. And as this generation and and the interest is do you find it hard 
to also release your music because of the genres and how it's becoming or do you not you still um, stay true to who you are yeah i try to stick you know pretty <laughs> i try to stick pretty close to my roots i mean i don't let it really affect me too much after all like i really have no control over like what other people release or what other people like but um yeah i just pretty much stay true to myself while i really have control of it's like the um quality of music that i release so right but I like just, have you ever gone to like a place and then like performed and then they didn't Ooh, um, vibe. That's what yeah, I, mean. I like, feel like. <laughs> I wasn't how do you necessarily like, deal with that? It, it's it's really like internal. It's a tough one. I can't yeah. lie. Like it's it's more like an internal battle that I don't think you'll ever get over. Um, I feel like everybody has that fear of you know rejection. Everybody has that fear of neglect. But um, I feel like it could also be like a driving factor as well too. So I don't think I've ever really been booed, but I do feel like there's been performances that I didn't give it my all, and I get off stage like you know what i could have done 10 times better than that like that's true and i feel like the other performers who were on stage really had like a different motif and they had like a different they're on a different time of time you know different yeah, type yeah, of time yeah. than i was because like i've heard that there's some like for me like i don't get stuck on i've performed i'm a performer mm-hmm. and i'm never in the studio i'm the complete opposite so for me going up on a mic and standing up on a mic and just talking it's normal i've done mm-hmm. it to church i've gone i've done public speaking so it's natural to me i'm not trying to put on a show and you don't feel that pressure when i'm up there because i'm used to it exactly it's like second nature yeah and even in public speaking in college they were like girl like you're a natural you should be a professor i'm like i've gotten it before but i don't want it but you know what i mean like i was like hey. but I don't Some know, people like, just have like that that ability to speak to people and actually touch them, you know. Yeah, and it's, yeah. It's a gift. It's a gift. It, it is a gift. Is. So like with me, it's like in my performances, I performed in councilman meetings, funerals, everything, and every audience always reacts differently. So for me to have artists tell me like I'm afraid in how the audience is going to react, and I'm always like every audience reacts differently, differently yeah, exactly. every single time you're gonna have the ones that are gonna be so pensive and like just frozen because maybe that's just how they react that's how you. they analyze music yes mm-hmm. or maybe you're gonna have the one that's just gonna be like yo this is dope like vibing hard and maybe that's just how they react to it exactly. but like everyone has their own like reaction to how they receive music and it's so <laughs> interesting to me because it's like sometimes it's when you like, take them it's like yeah. a chemical like it, it just hits you a certain way that you can't explain and everyone reacts to it differently like you said and it's it's beautiful honestly (laughs) and it's like you i feel like also the the artist's energy too up there like that's also something that flows without so Mm -hmm. so like out of them and goes into their audience so it's like if you are nervous and you are trying to put up a show and and you're pressured on that we're gonna it's gonna show it yeah, yeah that's true because <laughs> now because now you're thinking of like i'm probably gonna mess up this word as you're singing and like we can feel that exactly but like, <laughs> if you like say you know what fuck this i'm gonna put a show i don't care I'm what gonna you guys think myself. i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna have some confidence even though i probably you know don't have it right now but i'm still gonna <laughs> do it and you you put it on that show and you make it make it known sis exactly and i always tell everybody like you you shouldn't feel uncomfortable in your skin because like you are the best you yet you know like you woke up this morning and the only way that you're gonna get better the only time that you'll get better is when you wake up tomorrow like you know like you are the best version of yourself until tomorrow dang okay with the motivator (laughs) over here i try i try (laughs) so let's talk about as as music went along i want to know when was your first stage fright or outbreak on that So going back to what you said, you said, yeah, you said you were real big on performing when I was growing up. Like I was kind of like, I like to rap. So like performing was never a part of the uh, whole, I guess like, yeah, it it wasn't a part of the whole package for me. Like I didn't understand it at first and it's kind of something I had to add to the arsenal. So I feel like my first, um, my first memory with stage fright was definitely junior year. So that's when I first started doing music and I did the God inside in directions, girl, get it together. Put your pride to the side cause the egos will make it better. Conflicted inside my mind cause my ethos quick to remember you play me. Shit. 